In the last video, we looked at the rules for naming carboxylic acids, molecules that have a COOH group in them. In this video, what we're going to explore is how we go about naming molecules that are so-called carboxylic acid salts, where a salt is defined as a molecule that contains a cation and an anion. We form a carboxylic acid salt by deprotonating a carboxylic acid due to the fact that the carboxylic acid hydroxy group, the COOH group, has a proton that is relatively readily lost, this proton that I'm highlighting in pink here. What commonly occurs is that that particular carboxylic acid will react readily with a variety of bases. I'm just going to fill in my base as B minus here. That base will come in, use its lone pair of electrons to grab the proton from the carboxylic acid, forcing that oxygen hydrogen bond to break. And in this equilibrium reaction, the electrons from breaking that oxygen hydrogen bond go on to the oxygen atom to create a resonance stabilized conjugate base product where we can show the resonance here to illustrate the stabilization of that oxygen anion by sharing the negative formal charge across both of the oxygen atoms. So the oxygen anion is not stuck just on one of the two oxygens, but instead it is actually equally shared over both of those two oxygen atoms, therefore greatly stabilizing that conjugate base because sharing of the negative formal charge is caring. And so that is going to delocalize that negative charge, sharing it effectively over the two oxygen atoms and stabilizing this conjugate base, making the equilibrium of this reaction generally favorable toward the product side of the equation to some extent. And so that results in our conjugate base, our conjugate acid product out of this reaction would be formed by forming that bond between the base and the proton that the base stole from our carboxylic acid to give us our so-called conjugate acid product. And I'll be more clear here on the left-hand side of the equation that CA there means carboxylic acid. I could see how one might interpret that to mean conjugate acid, but it means carboxylic acid there. It's our acid in this reaction. So what we are looking at here when we talk about naming carboxylic acid salts is we're naming that conjugate base product from this reaction, as well as any cation that is associated with that. So let's take a look at how we go about naming those types of structures. So the way that we will name carboxylic acid salts is we're going to name them as metal alkanoates. What do we mean by that? Well, the metal part of this designation is going to refer to the name of the cation. For example, if you see any metal such as sodium, that will represent the first part of the name. And then following the template, the second part of the name alkanoate, that refers to the name of the carboxylic acid that this molecule was derived from with the oic acid removed and replaced with O8. So the oic acid part of the name, such as hexanoic acid, when it's deprotonated becomes hexan O8. So let's take a look at these rules for this example problem. So the starting material for creating this carboxylic acid salt, we can recognize by thinking about the oxygen atom here would originally have been an OH group. So if this was originally an OH group, the name of this molecule has a total of five carbons in our longest carbon chain with a methyl branch at carbon four, would have been four methyl pentanoic acid. But instead, since it is now a salt, the last part of the name is going to be 4-methyl pentanoate with the term sodium in the front of the name as the counter ion. So the name here, sodium, 
because that's the cation. Highlighted in pink there. And then our anion would be this oxygen is what actually has a negative formal charge in resonance with uh, the negative charge being shared over the other oxygen as well. And we have the rest of this structure and all of that together would be referred to as since we have a five carbon chain here with a methyl group branching off of carbon four, we'd call it four methyl pentan O8. And that O8 in combination with the fact that we have that term sodium at the front, those are going to be our clues that this represents a carboxylic acid salt. In other words, a carboxylic acid that has lost its proton so that the oxygen now carries a negative formal charge and is ionically complexed there with the sodium cation. So let's do one additional example. I was drinking a Sprite a couple of days ago and noticed on the ingredient label that Sprite contains sodium benzoate. Sodium benzoate is actually a really common food preservative or taste preservative. In fact, it says right here on the label for this Sprite can that it's to protect the taste. And if you open your cupboard or pantry, you'll very likely see sodium benzoate in one or more of the different food products that you have in there. It's very common. So what is the structure of sodium benzoate? It actually is in fact a deprotonated carboxylic acid. And the sodium part there is gonna indicate that we have our Na. And then benzoate, the term benzoate indicates that it is derived from benzoic acid. So what benzoate is, is deprotonated benzoic acid. And we know it's deprotonated because we have replaced that oic acid with O8. So therefore, the complete structure of this sodium benzoate is our sodium, ionically complex to the oxygen atom, it was originally part of the hydroxy group of benzoic acid. And remember, benzoic acid had that carboxylic acid group directly bonded to an aromatic ring. And so the structure of sodium benzoate is what I have just laid out here. We have our sodium cation, and then our anion would be the benzoate with the negative formal charge on the oxygen atom. So this is our structure of sodium benzoate, a very common food preservative. Um, that you will see in all sorts of different types of food products. So let's do one additional example here. And this will highlight a common name for, um, for a deprotonated carboxylic acid. So we have this two carbon deprotonated carboxylic acid here. And the common name for this very much follows the nomenclature that we have been talking about for determining the names of carboxylic acid salts in that you list the name of the metal and then the name of the deprotonated carboxylic acid as an alkanoate. So in the case of the common name here, the first part of the name will be sodium because we have that Na. And then our two carbon chain here is derived from acetic acid because if we had a proton here, it would be an OH group with a two carbon chain and that carboxylic acid. So that'd be acetic acid. And the name for this, the common name for this is sodium acetate. So it's a little different than the um, O8 because we don't have that O in there in this common name for what whatever reason. That's why it's a common name and not an IUPAC name. But sodium acetate, if you've done any DNA purification, is likely a reagent that you have quite possibly used for that. The IUPAC name for this particular molecule would still have sodium at the front. And the name of a two carbon carboxylic acid is ethanoic acid. And so once it becomes deprotonated, it is ethan O8. That O8 suffix indicating to us that we have a deprotonated carboxylic acid when we see it in combination with a metal cation there. So with this background knowledge, you should now be capable of providing the names of deprotonated carboxylic acids. We'll be applying this information in the upcoming couple of videos as we compare the acidities of different carboxylic acids and we try to relate the structures of molecules 
to how acidic that particular carboxylic acid is relative to other carboxylic acid groups.